Hey guys, this is Katie with the Myofascial Self-Care Video Course Online, and today I wanted to talk to you about um, negative beliefs that we learn about ourselves, especially if you've been in an emotionally abusive relationship, okay? Um, so first, I just want to say that today I deadlifted 105 pounds, me. Katie Brockway, little Katie Brockway, Katie who doesn't like to go to the gym, who's just weak and small and scared, yes, that person does not exist anymore. Uh, so how, how did I go from being a person who uh, I believed I was weak, I was afraid of gyms, I had never even been to one, um, to deadlifting almost my body weight? Uh, so. To back up a little bit, you know, I think some of these beliefs were already there from a young age. I don't know how they got put there, but I did have a really mean boyfriend for um, about a year or so. This guy I dated, it was an emotionally abusive relationship, and he would constantly put me down. So if you don't know what an emotionally abusive relationship is like, uh, you may have been in one before and basically what the person does is they constantly put you down, uh, constantly tell you limiting beliefs about yourself like you're, you're irresponsible, you're bad with money, you're, you're weak, um, you do this, you do that and they do it constantly to basically uh, beat you down into a submissive place where you just feel so bad about yourself. You, you've lost all your power, so you just give all the power to them and they can basically control everything. So I dated this guy. One of the things, one of the many things that he uh, beat me up about, not physically but verbally, uh, was being weak and he would make fun of me for it and we went hiking once whole time he's going on and on about how slow I am wouldn't let me rest uh, only let us stop for five minutes at the top of the mountain and then wanted to go back down and I injured my knee on the way down went to the doctor saw a knee specialist went to PT got an MRI nothing they had no idea what was wrong with me they probably thought I was crazy but my knee would swell up all the time if I tried to go down a hill or something like that. So the only thing that ever made my knee any better was MFR. I had a huge emotional release and the knee pain pretty much went away and I realized that it wasn't a physical thing. It was an emotional thing from that experience being so such a negatively emotional experience with him. And so I went to one of my first seminars with John Barnes, and he has us look at what our negative beliefs are about ourselves or about the world, whatever. He asks us to think of, you know, what, what belief is coming up. And mine was, I am weak. So I'm doing all these affirmations like, I am strong, and I hiked the Grand Canyon and my knee didn't swell, and I was like, yeah, I'm strong now. Um, but it still, it still wasn't really going away. Like it still kept coming up in different situations. I'd get myself into a situation that was not good, that was surrounding this belief that I really hadn't totally delved into. And what I came to realize through a lot of MFR, a lot of unwinding, a lot of just introspection, just looking at Situ looking at situations in your daily life where you can see that belief is coming up, where you can see that it's driving the situation and say, seeing it and being like, okay, what is underneath this even deeper? And the belief that was underneath it even deeper than I am weak, because that was just the superficial thing, right? It was that I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy, right? That's what he was doing, the ex-boyfriend. He was making me feel unworthy, making me feel not good enough so that he could do whatever he wanted to me, say whatever he wanted to me, have complete control over me. So once I realized that, things started to shift, things started to change. I had been going to the gym and training, but I was still like 
so precarious about everything. I just wasn't really into it and I still was like, eh, I don't know if I'm like a gym person. Um, but once I realized that belief about self-worth, not just being about weak, being weak, but about my self-worth, things started to shift and change and I started getting stronger at the gym. I started uh, lifting more and more weights and I'm also working with a really great trainer too. So that is very important uh, if you're interested in doing work at the gym. I really recommend you find someone who knows how to make sure you're doing the exercises properly so that you don't injure yourself. But uh, that is what changed everything. And it's not just about weightlifting. It's not just about um, the physicality of things. Because once I realized that I can deadlift 100 pounds, which I never, ever, ever thought I could, you start to realize, oh, what else could I do that I never thought I could? You start to realize how powerful you truly are. You take your power back. Okay. John Barnes is always talking about that. Take your power back. You can't take your power back until you find the limiting beliefs that are holding you back. It might be that you, are, you think you're weak. It might be that you think you're stupid. It might be that you think you just don't deserve to have abundance in your life or whatever. There's so many of them. You know, that's not my only limiting belief that's come up through MFR, but it's one that uh, I just wanted to share with you guys today because I know probably a lot of you feel that way. And I know that a lot of people do get into emotionally abusive relationships with narcissistic people and I just want you guys to know that you're not alone um, so there's definitely a lot of healing that can be done once you get out of a relationship like that so I hope that this has inspired you to take a look at maybe some limiting beliefs about yourself that you might have that might not really be true even if you don't believe it right now just notice what the negative beliefs are and ask yourself if maybe it could be not true and start doing that inner work start um, noticing how they play out in your life start noticing how they come up in your MFR sessions or when you're unwinding when you're talking to your therapist the language that you use all of that stuff because once you start really looking at it and seeing the ways that you're holding yourself back you can start to have the life that you really want because you're not being held back anymore. You can go out and get all of those things you want, do all of those things you do. All right, I uh, hope you are well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.